public enemy number one, a foe whose battalions are thousands of millions strong despite unceasing slaughter. Today, as the rabbit menace reaches an all-time high, national leaders, farmers, graziers and local authorities are fighting a vital battle. The prize is Australia's rich and fertile grazing land. It's no use blaming governments, for many landowners seem disinterested in a plague which threatens their livelihood. Grasslands are laid bare as rabbits destroy vegetation which keeps the soil together and dig winding burrows to warrens below the surface. Millions of acres have been laid waste. Then come the winds. Precious soil is whirled away in dusty clouds and the grassland becomes a desert. Australia's natural wealth is being sapped. In gullies, burrows cause more damage. Rainwaters flood them, they collapse, and the precious topsoil is washed away. Wire fences will stop the rabbit invasion. One side eaten bare, the other side well grassed. These rabbits died of starvation with wire netting keeping them from the grass. But the war caused a shortage of wire netting and neglect of rabbit-proof fences. So the plague advances through the breaks, leaving devastation in its wake. Those marks are the tracks of an army, an army of rabbits heading for the fertile east. With no grass left, they even ate the bark from this tree. Wire is still desperately short. Australian mills at Newcastle, New South Wales, hampered by coal and steel shortages, cannot meet the huge demand. So the government is endeavouring to import wire from dollar countries and from Europe. The imported price is high, but the need is urgent. Meanwhile, harassed farmers set traps in an all-out effort to stem the swarm. But this method alone cannot ever remove the menace. It is said that if every man, woman and child in Australia set traps, it would not even dent the rabbit populations. It is a grim fact that the rabbit was originally imported to Australia from England to provide sport for gentlemen. In the battle with the rabbit, poison gas is used too. Andro poison held on a long spoon is sprinkled with water and placed in the burrow. The water generates gas which slowly fills the warren. Burrows are filled in and every entrance sealed. Cyanogas gas is also used with special blower. First gas is pumped into the burrow and then air. The widespread maze of burrows is sealed by ploughing and rabbits die before they can dig their way out. Cyanogas gas kills quickly but it's imported from America. That means dollars and more hold-ups. Trapping's slower, but it gets at least some results. Here's a catch from once round the traps. Carcasses are often destroyed, a tragedy in a world short of food. And watching this wastage, city dwellers may ponder why they're asked to pay one and ninepence each for an uncooked rabbit. This man is saving skins, though they're inferior because they're summer pelts. The skins are stretched on wire frames and hung on fences to dry. The one bright spot is that winter rabbit skins earn Australia millions of dollars in export trade. But mostly in summer, carcasses are burned. The rabbit war is so grim that for him there's no time to worry about sending flesh to markets. Poison baits are used and are effective. But for every rabbit killed, thousands still thrive. The amazing fecundity of the rodent is traditional. With grasslands ravaged, erosion increasing and crops being damaged, the problem is daily growing more serious. More rabbit-proof fencing is needed. More poison gas and traps. Farmers and graziers who have been indifferent must be made to help. The rabbit war is one we must win, and win quickly.